technology, transportation is all the rage right now, which means people are going to have some job opportunities in fixing and building. Yes. Um, you know, Rio Honda College offers classes in the green tech field. And let me just say, this type of engineering work is amazing stuff. It really is. Instructor John C. Frala, <laughs> he joined us today now to show us how some of the students use the gear to train him, to train the students. This is great stuff. Well, let me give you a little bit of background. Okay. Uh, our campus has had an alternative fuels program for 28 years. Uh, we've graduated quite a few students. We place them in mass transit, uh, industry, uh, throughout the factories, Honda Corporation uh, is a big sponsor of our program. Yes. So we've been on the forefront of this for quite a long time. We started with compressed gas fuels, compressed gases, electric cars, hybrids, and this is the newest technology right now. We're taking basically a distilled water and you put it into an electrolyzer and this is hydrogen fuel right here. Really? This has got, got enough fuel in that little canister right there to run this car wow. for about a half an hour. So how big is the real hydrogen in a, in a, a real car? It's four, it could be one to about four kilograms which is probably 28 and about maybe 24 inches in diameter. And it's placed inside the car underneath the rear seat. And one of these will, be, will run the vehicle, right? Yes. So they're, they were, what we're doing now is we're electrolyzing or reforming uh, either natural gas or water into the hydrogen gas. So we're splitting atoms. So the students are learning how to split atoms to create fuel so that now we have a green source that doesn't have any carbon footprint into the environment. This is a very new technology for the car industry. We've had fuel cells on the market since about 1989. Honda was the first one to do it. Okay. But we haven't had a fueling structure in place. So with our governor right now and his big push for green sta uh, sustainability, we've been able to put 25 stations in uh, fully operational at this point. We have another 39 that are scheduled to come on in the next couple of months. So we will have a, a total of about 80 to 100 stations by the end of 2018. Yeah, they're kind of discreet, too. I know that there's <laughs> one in Pasadena yes. over on Foothill. Uh, LA, but you don't uh, really kind of... Cal State LA has a, the biggest one right now oh, okay. that's open to the station. And AQMD and Diamond Bar also has the station. Well, let me ask a question. Um, how long have you been um, an instructor at the school? I've been there just at 20 years. Okay. And I run two different degree programs, one for gaseous fuels, one for electric and fuel cell. And what's this about the class average of students do you have? 24 to 30. Uh, we, we've got a 95% place ratio right now for jobs. Oh, I'd imagine, and, uh, yeah. Scholarships and the, the guys are just writing scholarships like crazy right now. They just got about two hundred thousand dollars in the group, so between them all, so they're doing very well. I will assume with this technology that um, the students are getting job offers like crazy. Yes, and what you guys were earlier talking about Foothill Transit. Foothill Transit has electric buses, which is, are manufactured by Proterra, and they just built a new plant in the city of Industry, and we yesterday had negotiations with them to supply them with students and management people to supply that factory. So in addition to the buses, are, where are the other cars being manufactured? Um, all over the U.S. Uh, Mercedes has got one. Uh, Audi, BMW, uh, Volkswagen has a few electric cars. There are a lot of the, like Honda and Toyota do a lot of the stuff here in the United States with the Japanese parts. So it's a conglomeration, I guess you would say, yeah, of a so lot of different places. Where are the opportunities? Is it, are there a lot of opportunities in California still to stay and work in California then on the cars? Or where do yeah. you see more of the plants that are um, up? Tesla's in Fremont right on the, on the south side of the bay. So they're probably the biggest electrical car manufacturer right now. But they have five service centers down here. So I have technicians working in the service centers, male and female. So we have about a 13% population of female students going nice. into this technology. Uh, that we haven't had in the past. The cars have always been a dirty, greasy thing, and <laughs> this is very clean. Yes. A lot of electronics, a lot of high-tech electronics, a lot of math. So my students are coming out of this associate's degree with physics, chemistry, and the automotive side of it. So they're being placed in management, uh, service writer positions, uh, and as well as technicians, service technicians. How long is the program? It's a two-year program. It's about $4,500 for your associate's degree. Um, there are bog waivers and things like that, so there's financial assistance for the state of California. But we have, again, a lot of companies offering money for students that go into this technology because it's so emerging right now. But what I brought today was a, a, great field. 
This is a mock-up of a fuel cell car. This would be very close to resemblance of the new uh, Toyota Mirai. Yeah, you okay. have your controller back yes, here, <laughs> controller which right here. we can't see with the camera. So lift the, lift the controller up really quickly. It's just a regular radio control car, and what we did, we took all the guts out of it, and we created a fuel cell for it and a digital pack back here that records all the data. So then what I do is I run the car and simulate it, take the computer chip up to my computer desk That's and so cool. put it up on the board so we can make maps and graphs and the students can now look at battery usage, energy that we've used, regeneration of uh, electronics and the braking. Um, and this one final thing about it, that um, that vehicle can go up to 40 miles per hour. <laughs> yes, this thing, you've got to be careful with this. I know somebody tripped over it, right? Right. How, how would somebody get a hold of you if they wanted to be part of the program? Um, they could contact us at Rio Hondo College um, in the it's a CTE area is where we're at. Um, website uh, is um, on, uh, right through the main school website. You would go to the CTE area and it would go directly to us. Or um, they could contact me directly on the campus if they want to tour the campus, tour the buildings. Um, there's really? no problem with that. They can come right in. We have counselors there on spot uh, to talk to them about ed education plans, how long the path would take and nice. see what areas they're interested in. Fantastic. John thank you, sir, Carla, for coming thank here today. Thank you so much. Absolutely. That's it for our show today. Thank you very much for joining us. We also want to thank Anne-Marie Vilcana for joining us and talking about real estate. Uh, we have this fabulous program with John Frala, and we have some wonderful sponsors. Yes, we, um, we want to thank Foothill Transit for being a sponsor in EH Financial. Um, East San Gabriel Valley ROP, we thank you also. Uh, what about Color Dots? Color Dot, Smile Agency, yes. NGOC Global. Yes. They always have our back. <laughs> San Gabriel Valley e Economic Partnership. Yes. yes, and the ROP right here on our campus where we film. They're always <laughs> fantastic. And our crew is amazing. Yes, of we course, have a always great a crew. crew. <laughs> and you can find us on social media, right? Yes. We are on Twitter and we are on Facebook. And what else do we have? I think we have an Instagram now. Um, you can find us on. I always get this wrong. <laughs> CrownCityNews.com. <laughs> and you can watch us on KVMD, 5 o'clock on Sundays and 6, 6 o'clock on, on Saturdays. Saturdays. Thanks very much for watching us. This is amazing stuff. This goes in, um, so that makes it go forward. <laughs> so just push it up. Oh, we can. It's live. Wow, wow. <laughs> jump out of that does. And the actual, um, so what it does is it records the data through this thing of, of what the fuel cells provided to the wheels. And from there, we, we download that to the board. Very cool. And so it's, it's got its own, own onboard diagnostics. Yeah. So we can so, do anything with it. And this, in the actual vehicle, the actual regular size vehicle, where is this located at? They split it into two areas of the vehicle to balance it for the weight. Okay. The, the tanks weigh a little bit, about 200 pounds. 200 pounds per tank? Yeah. James Bond. It, it <laughs> sort of is. That's, that's why it, this is a very <laughs> interesting <laughs> feel to me. That's great. Because this right here is a little heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's about two and a half grams. But that, those are solid oxide. So just fill those this morning. Wow. So we're doing it with water. It's a lot cleaner and takes less energy to split the atoms. 